So another important thing that you can do with this representation is recover the joint distribution. Remember a couple, a couple slides ago we looked at the issue of how can we go from the distri joint distribution to specifying what the probabilities are, the conditional probability tables they're called, at each of these nodes. But we can actually go the other direction as well. We can go from, from the values in these conditional probability tables at each of the nodes to computing the probability of any combination, any joint combination of variables that we want. So it turns out it's really, really simple. We can just go and use these same ideas and say the joint probability for some assignment to the variables is equal to just the product of all the individual values. So the, pro the probability that that value of A would be taken times the probability that that value of B would be taken times the probability that that value of C would be taken conditioned on those the values that were chosen for A and B. So it's just like in the sampling case. Right, and that's much more compact a representation. That's a good observation, yeah. So how if these were Boolean variables, how many values would we need to specify for the joint distribution in the standard representation where you just assign a probability to everything? Well, if I ignore the fact that there are some constraints we might be able to take advantage of, it would be 2 to the 5th because there are 5 variables. Right. But here, we've broken it down into smaller chunks. So the probability of A is just specified by a single number. Probability of B is specified by a single number. Probability of C is specified for a single number for each combination of A and B. That's four of them. This also is, requires four values, and this requires four values. So this is really what? It's like 2 to the 5th what, minus 1, I guess, because... If I tell you the first 31 values, the last, the 32th value uh, is just 1 minus the sum of all the others. So this is 14 numbers versus 31. Hmm. So you're right, it is more compact. 31 is bigger. Right, but let's imagine that all of the variables were in fact completely independent of one another. Then you would have 5. You'd only need 5 numbers, right? Because it would be the product of the unconditionals. Yeah, which is what we'd get if we had kind of like just a set of weighted coins, that they're unrelated to each other, but each one has some probability of coming up heads. The probability of getting some, some particular combination, like A is heads and B is tails and C is heads and D is heads and E is heads, we could just break that down to the probability of the individual events. Right. So then all of the, just like with the joint distribution where you have this exponential growth because you need to know everything, here you have the exponential growth that only depends upon the number of parents you have. If you have no parents, then it's constant. If you have parents, then it grows exponentially with the number of parents. Good. Right. So the fewer parents, the more compact the distribution ends up being.